It seems as if we can't go more than a few days without seeing a report linking what we eat to our long-term health. Meat lovers and specifically fans of bacon get their fair share of those types of stories. Risk of high blood pressure, cancer and heart disease are just a handful of what could happen if a bad diet becomes a habit. So the question remains, with all the news out there, has it caused folks to take pause as they approach the table? In 2015, carnivores worldwide were stunned by news from the World Health Organization's International Agency for Research on Cancer that their diets might be dishing them up disease. Pouring over 800 studies, the WHO labeled red meat a probable carcinogen, suggesting a possible connection to colorectal, pancreatic, and prostate cancers. But some health officials say consumers have taken the warning with a grain of salt. I think we think about these guidelines as evolving. Um, it's been a pretty consistent message by many leading organizations, both related to cancer as well as cardiovascular disease, that red meat may increase risk. Dietitian Dr. Kathy Mellon says the conclusions of the 22 health experts from 10 countries tax onto decades of medical knowledge about diet and disease prevention, but fail to pin the tail on lamb, pork, or beef. However, the IARC did issue its most dire classification for other American food staples, and hot dogs, cold cuts, and bacon also struck out with other global health authorities. There is enough evidence there for many organizations to say we should significantly limit the processed meats in our diet. Last year, the American Institute for Cancer Research and the World Cancer Research Fund reiterated WHO findings that for every 1.8 ounces or 50 grams of processed meat eaten per day, the risk of lower stomach cancers increases by 18 percent. Experts say the WHO's food findings only up the average lifetime risk of developing colon carcinoma via consumption of salted, cured, fermented, and smoked meats from 5 to 6 percent, a lower danger level when compared to cigarettes and asbestos, which share the category of known carcinogens. Still, many believe the notion of killer meat can hoof it. Go bacon! <laughs> Others choose to celebrate all things bacon. You don't have to look far to find a bacon fest or a bacon proponent eager to point out the benefits. Sometimes bacon gets a bad rap. With a balanced diet, you know, you can incorporate bacon into your diet and make it a healthy, you know, it's, you know, it's, it's good fat, good in protein. I think it's the perfect food. It's salty, yet sweet. I don't eat bacon every day. I love it, but I don't. You know, they're kind of using scare tactics. You know, hot dogs are bad for you. Meat's bad for you. You know, again, everything in moderation. According to the USDA, there are 67.6 million head of hogs across the U.S., all those cuts are both freshly cooked and cured to extend shelf life. And common preservatives like sodium nitrate and nitrite have become a major target of cancer warnings. But some niche producers assert that an uncured approach utilizing natural safeguards like celery brine may be safer and taste better. As minimally processed as possible is what we're about. Berkwood Farms, a co-op of about 40 family operations, supplies the Berkshire breed to many bacon festivals and beyond. All of our products are a nitrite-free product, so I don't really consider ours as processed meat um, like all the other larger corporations. Pork producer Randy Hilleman says Berkwood Farms production techniques have earned a reputation among discerning consumers who yearn for the good old days. It kind of started uh, 20, 30 years ago or 40 years ago when they, they started buying pork by lean premium. And so they got the pigs leaner and leaner and leaner. Well, the flavor is in the fat. And if you don't have any fat, you don't have the flavor. I don't know how many people have said that is the best ham they've ever had in their life, even 80-year-olds. Berkwood Farms hopes the appetite for nostalgia will help grow their business. And as medical authorities seek to first do no harm, debate over meat products will continue to be processed by all stakeholders.